but the rifle she held in her hand should have been a trump card that the culprit feared. Yeah. Thanks for the commentary, George. Oh no, you just have to be really pissed to do it. Yeah, if they have a small little hammer, that's easy. That'll go straight through the skull. Okay. I really would feel more comfortable if I had the gun personally, not to, but you know. Whatever. Just how sinister and frightening was the weapon that could shoot those creepy ice picks? And could I do anything to combat it with just the candle stand in my hand? In the first murder, the culprit probably assaulted all four of our parents at once as they discussed the inheritance problem in the dining hall. And there were those four and there were four of us here now. Apparently I wasn't the only person thinking this. George, Jessica, and of course Anatsui were stre stretching their senses to the utmost limit in the highest and worst state of tension, slowly advancing one step uh, then another. Oh, what have we done? Because the seeds of doubt spread by that one letter, we threw Maria and the rest into the middle of this terrifying world. Yeah, but there was no reason we had to be here. We finally reached the first floor. The parlor was just across the hall. When we listened carefully, we could hear it faintly. Maria's eerie singing. She wasn't singing naturally, as though we were in a good mood. She was singing mechanically, like she was at a graduation ceremony and she'd been ordered to. The song she sang was just a common folk song, one that everyone had probably sung in school at one time or another. But why that in the middle of the night, alone with all her heart? Over and over, why? Right after leaving the study, we had called out in a loud, loud voice asking Maria where she was. But this time no one said e even a single word. We hid our breaths and the sound of our footsteps, and intensely focused on our surroundings to the point of being completely high strung, we stepped forward. The door to the parlor was closed, but we could hear Maria's singing voice through it. Anatoly put her hand on the handle of the doorknob when George stopped her. Oh god, don't. Fuck that, I don't want to go in there. He tried to open it, but immediately felt the hard resistance of the lock. Anatsui took the bundle of keys from her pocket and gave them to George. There were about ten keys and none of us had a clue which was which. Because this George had to fumble around loudly and test several of the keys. Since we had hidden our footsteps, preparing to make a surprise attack on the room, this felt almost fatal. The whole time we could hear Murray singing a voice from the parlor, singing the same song over and over. It was like a broken, broken crazy cassette tape. We've been in that room almost cert constantly since this morning. All the frightening things had occurred outside that room. That had left us with the impression that only this room was safe. That faceless impression was quickly falling apart. Oh god, I don't want to go in. 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 I would gladly move behind you. I don't want to split up. 
Then open the door, but stand like where the door frame is. And don't stick your head out, if you're afraid of that. No. I would, because I'd be like, I'd rather be in a safe room. I readied myself. If they're gonna be throwing ice picks, I'll whack them with this candlestick. Candle stand. Onatsu and I had ran into the door before flying into the parlor, quickly splitting up left and right, searching the parlor for someone who might be waiting for us. But what our lives landed upon. Stop it. Was an incredibly strange sight. Oh my god. The parlor was stained with blood. This place where we spent almost the entire day. Where we pa pressed in and together to protect ourselves from some unknown malice. Had been stained with fresh blood and become an ocean of blood. On the floor lay Genji, Kumasawa, and Dr. Nandro, their entire body stained bright red with blood. But the only way we could identify them was by their clothes. That was because, oh, that's right. This is how the whole tragedy started. Their faces. Just like our smashed up parents in the shed. We couldn't tell where their eyes stopped and their noses began. It was as though they'd rudely plunged their faces into tomato pot pies, all squished up. Ugh! And that wasn't all. Their bodies had other wounds. It was those demon ice picks. They were in Genji's stomach, Nanjo's thigh, Noah's knee. That's right, of course, it's his knee. In the epitaph, the sixth twilight was the stomach, on the seventh twilight, the knee was gouged, and Kumasawa's leg. So after seeing one of them stuck near Kumasawa's calf, I couldn't help masochistically laugh. Ah, that's right. On the sixth twilight, gouge the stomach and kill. On the seventh twilight, gouge the knee and kill. On the eighth twilight, gouge the leg and kill. Ah! Now even the eighth twilight is over. In the next one, the ninth twilight, what was it again? Beatrice will resurrect or revive. Maria was there. Shoot her. Put her fucking down. Put her down like a goddamn animal. Right in the back of the head. She was facing the wall in the inner part of the room, standing stock still, completely alone. Shoot her. End her. Immediately. I don't care. No questions. Just put her down. Put her the fuck down. That is too goddamn creepy. She faced away from the horrible steam, standing by the wall, singing her song over and over. There was nothing else in the room. Just the corpse of the three who had been brutally killed and the phone receiver, which was still off its hook, proving that this was the room the call had come from. Just that and, and Maria, her back to the scene as she kept on singing while facing the wall. We couldn't even scream at this bizarre scene. We could only stare shocked, with our mouths hanging loosely open. Shoot her. Put her down. Fuck it. No questions. Kill her. Don't care. Jessica called out to her, but Maria showed no reaction. Alone, she kept singing on and on. Shoot her. Fuck it. Nope. We had come here trying to save Maria from some approaching danger. So now that we had found her, we should have been running up to Maria, hugging her joyous that she was safe. And yet no one, not one of us could do that. Everyone thought it, but they couldn't say it. After all, because, because, that's right. Even if that's crazy. No, it couldn't be. Maria! Kill her. Kill her. Not worth it. Not worth keeping her alive. At some point, Anantu and I had pointed our weapons at Maria's back. Do it! Shoot her! I yelled at Maria in a violent voice. Shoot her! I would have turned to Anantu and said, Kill her! Now! But there was no reaction. She just kept singing, Shoot! With the candle stand still ready, I ran up to her and forcefully, no, violently slammed my head da hand down on her shoulder. Then I pulled on her shoulder, forcing her to turn around. Maria's small body was quickly pulled down and fell. 
And as though unhappy at si having her singing interrupted, Maria looked into my face with her usual expression. Even in this gru ta gruesome situation, she was just like normal. Maria, this is what fucking kill her. No, I don't care. Nope. That is too many goddamn times that you've said that. You have lost your right to live. Oh shit. I threw the candle stain I had been holding against the wall. The violence of that reckless sound should have gone straight into Maria's heart. But Maria's expression didn't change at all. Shut the fuck up, George! Probably. Fuck off. Natsui, kill her. Now. Either that or someone faked their death. That's all I got. It's either a 19th person or someone's faking their death. <laughs> Maria killed all these people, which would be really fucked up. I don't know, I've been facing the wall singing. That's when I would fly off the handle and kill her right then and there. If she says that, I'd kill her instantly, just say, fuck off. I don't know. What do you mean you don't fucking know? You didn't hear them screaming. You didn't hear them hitting the ground. Get the fuck out of here. George, shut the fuck up! Three people just died! Don't give me... Oh, calm down! What the fuck? This is the time not to be calm. George, as he always did, crouched down next to Maria so that their eyes met and talked to her very kindly. Because I wanted to. Because Beatrice told her to. Let me guess. Of course. It was still locked. Shooter. Shooter. That door was still locked and she was in here. Kill her. Immediately. Uh, I don't care. She obviously unlocked the door and just walked in. Uh, but seriously, I'd kill her. Fuck it. You're not gonna get anything out of this. She's creepy as shit. She's revoked all of her rights. Cut the crap! Huh? Oh my god, that would piss me off. Not so we fucking shoot her! <laughs> now really shoot her. Kill her. So, so of course she did. I want her to die. I want her to die. 
Of course she did. Let me guess the fucking scorpion charm. I mean, it probably isn't because she knows that you will say exactly what she tells you to do. Sure. God. Punch the shit out of me and say, Quit fucking around! Who was it? You had to have heard something. それを信じろってのか。バカにするんじゃねえぜ。マリオを疑う。マリオをこの場で殺してみる。そんなことしてもペアトリーチェはいなくならない。これで第8の番は終わったよ。ペアトリーチェは蘇る。Save anything. <laughs> Found in the parlor of her calf had a weapon resembling an ice pick sticking out of it. Her face had been smashed with the eight twilight gouts of the leg. Uh, Genji. The six twilight gouts the stomach and kill. Gouge the knee. Fucked up. That's really fucked up and that epitaph thing, it is. Yeah, and the ninth twilight shall revive, and none shall be left alive. Fuck me. Shut the fuck up, Jessica. This is not the time. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Unable to resist. Get the hell out of here. Get the get the fuck out of here, Jessica. Oh god damn it, not the gun! No! I need that! A fucking course. Natsui, I swear to god you better have left that gun because <laughs> I need that. What letter? Oh my god! I want to kill you, Maria. I really do. A letter? That makes sense. The culprit must be so exhilarated now that they, we've reached the 8th twilight. They must have left a letter so that they could brag even more. We were so wrapped up in questioning Maria that we forgot to look for a letter. But even as well-armed as she was, why had she left the room by herself in this dangerous mansion after reading it? Jessica tried to chase after her, tugged at the handle of the door, but it resisted strangely and won't open, wouldn't open. Oh my god, no. Move, and I just get I would kick the fucking door down time. Break it down. It was only natural. Not until he had picked up the candle stand which Battle had thrown up at the wall and which had fallen to the floor. She had then skillfully wedged it between the door knobs on on the double door like a bolt, holding them closed. Oh my god, not to me. Break it. Break the door. 
The intri intricate design of the candle stand caused it to get caught solidly, and it really did make a sturdy seal on the door. Well, I mean, you, she got it in there. She, you can get it out. The tragic scream of a daughter for her mother. Did it reach not to his ears or not? Natui's figure was alone in the entrance hall. It was the place decorated by the portrait of Beatrice. Natui threw down Battler's last le Beatrice's last letter, the one she had read in the parlor. Ready to rifle again, and in a voice that rang clear, yelled in the massive space that was the entrance hall. <laughs> Time to blast some fu fucker away. <laughs> The entrance hall was dimly lit. Other than a faint light which shone at the center of the room, everything was blotted out by the jet black darkness. In that darkness, butterflies glittering in gold squirmed, twinkled, and sneered. Fuck off! Witches aren't real! Nato gave one more huge gulp and pointed the cold barrel of the gun at the golden butterflies. <laughs> Time to blast her away. でも、それは問題ではありません。後ろ宮家の大表であると自負する私と後ろ宮家の当主を引き継いだと自称するあなたは今この場にいる。あなたは本当に魔女なのかどうかは今となっては些細な問題です。さあ、決着をつけましょう
And then she shot herself in the forehead? Why? The fuck is going on? I'm sorry for your loss, Jessica. Yeah, I'm get can you please move? I need that gun. Makes no sense. That's a good point. Who the fuck cares why she left at this point? Jessica clung to her mother's corpse, crying earnestly. My body was consumed with an anger I didn't know what to do with. And I snatched the rifle from Aunt Natsu's hand. Thank you! Come here, motherfucker! Where are you? I'm not gonna miss! I spun around, pointing the barrel of the gun into the darkness on all sides. As though I was pointing a light from a, from a lighthouse, trying to find the culprit. George, even in this situation, was trying to calmly figure something out. But that might have been a fruitless effort. And only Maria was completely indifferent. So it, is this all supposed to be some kind of predetermined fate? No, it, that's not it. It's all a prelude to a wonderful world. The door to the Golden Land will finally open. Shooter. I don't care. You're not going there unharmed. Reload the shot. Ah, time to take her out. Then all the dead will be revived and even the lost level will be restored. So in Maria's eyes, it's just as though all of today's tragedies didn't happen. It's as though all the time she spent deprived of love never happened. And shoot her right in the fucking back. You're gonna suffer for your last minutes here. I agree, Battler. So kill Maria. Guns may be useless against witches. They're not useless against you, shooter. Right then, just drop that line and then shoot her ass. <laughs> and say, shut the fuck up about witches. And then leave. Go somewhere else. Grab the two golden keys off Natsui and head right back up the stairs. And say, you two can follow me if you fucking want. I am barricading myself in that room and I'm not leaving until this typhoon passes and I walk to that goddamn boat. Huh? The clock. Hearing those words, I tw looked at my wristwatch. Both needles were almost touching near the top. Very soon it will be 12 at night. In other words, midnight. When you think about it, isn't 2400 a strange time? It can be called 2400, and it can also be called zero. It's the hour at the culmination of the previous day, and at the same time, it's uh, it's hour zero as the next day begins. Shoot her. Shoot them both. Maria suddenly called out happily and ran towards the darkness. It was almost as though Beatrice was somewhere in that darkness, and Maria was running up to her. 
As Jessica hugged her mother's corpse, as George stood there confused, I looked down the barrel of the rifle, gazing into the darkness. The space in front of Beatrice's portrait lay in that direction, and the thing Maria was running up to was... The sub portrait subject. That's not- No! She isn't real! That is someone dressed up as a- It's not a real witch! Shoot them both! You've got to be kidding me. This is just impossible. Shoot them! Shoot them both! Fuck it! Guarantee that someone's dying there. Like I'd fall for something like this. Witches don't exist. I won't accept it. Something like you shouldn't exist because this is a human world. You think I could accept something that's not human? I definitely won't accept it. I agree. When I pulled hard on the lever's rifle, uh, rifle's lever, the cartridge was ejected, fell on the floor, and a new cartridge was loaded. Fire! Yes! Then I sighted the witch down the barrel. Maria turned around. Fire! The second she turns around, you take the shot. Still clinging to the golden witch, she turned around. Yeah, I don't take your word for it. Fire. Reload. Fire. Reload. Just keep going at it. I don't care how many- you just waste the entire- all the ammunition you have. Just all of it at once. Just back to back. Just keep firing. I wouldn't stop. Again, they may be useless against Beatrice. They're not useless against you, at least. Shoot her. I don't care. Shoot them both. Put them both down. See, I would already do that. I would already shoot Maria and just say, Get the fuck against that wall and you're gonna tell me who the fuck you are! Shoot them both. Not fucking what, laughing? Kill them both. Not a fan. Ask the witch. No, the witches laughed. Even the large clock in the hall joined in on their laughter. It was probably telling us that, uh, us that the time was 2400. It was both a tone telling us that we had reached the culmination of this day, and a tone informing us that all had returned to nothing. The rule that the witch would win when time ran out had already, already been revealed. And none shall be left alive. The witch shall praise the wise and bestow four treasures. One shall be the gold from the golden land. One shall be the resurrection of all dead souls. One shall be the resurrection of the love that was lost. One shall be put to the witch to sleep for all time. Sleep peacefully, my beloved witch Beatrice. Shoot them both. I want confirmation that it's not a human. Well, is that it? That's it. Oh, the first one's over. He storm passed. The storm passed, and the la laden clouds that had intruded the island for so long had been cleared away. Some beams shone from the rifts between the clouds. Yesterday's storm seemed like a lie. Just as someone had wished, the seagulls returned to the harbor once again and let their lively cries be heard. Afterwards, the police arrived and conducted an investigation of the scene. The corpses of the children who are believed to have survived until the very end were never found, and however from the body parts that were discovered in the unimaginably hor gruesome nature of the scene, the police were forced to conclude that the chances of survival of any of the 18, including the children, were hopelessly dim. Damn.
fucking wish. Just how gruesome was the banquet of the witch, and how beautiful was the golden lane. Those tales are for them alone to tell amongst themselves. They have no tale for those who arrived after the banquet had ended. One can only but imagine what had transpired during the course of those two days. However, the witch was fickle. She made a point of leaving behind this tale which had not been told to be told and permitted it to be spread. A few years later, a strange wine bottle drifted on the waves of the quayside of a neighboring island was recovered by a fisherman. Studied in, stuffed inside were tightly rolled notebook pages, cramped full to the edges with minuscule writing. Written here was this tale. It would be thoroughly through these pages that people would first come to know that the nature of the mysterious riddle filled two-day period that began on October 4, 1986. This incident would later be referred as the Rokunjima Mass Murders, or the 18 Killings of Rokunjima. But dialects around the world passed the story as the word, as the name of the witch le legend serial murder case. Lovers of the occult claimed it to be the story result of an immoral ritual they sealed off on the island, and sa sa savagely embellished the mysterious two-day span of their own inter interpretations as they spread it far and wide. However, not of the, none of these interpretations arrived at the truth of the facts, and while the notebook pages tell us of the mysterious incidents, they do not tell us the truth behind it. In fact, per in fact, perhaps that not even the writer of the notebook knew the truth. Perhaps she may have desired to know. According to the writer's, writer's signature, her name was Ushiro Mia, uh, Maria. Furthermore, as a result of an all-out police search, part of the, uh, Maria's body has been discovered, a piece of her jaw. It was one of the rare instances where the owner of the body was part of a dental record, blah, blah, blah. There were many parts that could not be linked to any specific person in the gruesome scene, so the jaw could be called an extremely fortunate find. Because the jaw had been separated from its body, the police consider her chances of survival to be hopelessly dim, even though other, no other parts were found to identify. Let us conclude this tale from the, with the final paragraph in the notebook pages uh, that Ushiro Mia Maria left behind. By the time you read this, I will probably be dead. Although there are many, may or may not be a corpse, you who have read this, please uncover the truth. That is my only wish. Oh, God. Ushiro Mia Maria. Fucking Maria. To this very day, the truth of the witch legend serial murder case has not been brought to life. I mean, go fucking figure. Oh my God, I didn't actually, I didn't know this golden lane thing was a fucking lie. Fuck, I don't want to die. Fuck it, should have shot her ass. First game, Legend of the Golden Witch Result. Rouse died on the first twilight. Rudolph died on the first twilight. Cho chosen as a key. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Rosa. Sacrifice. Kyrie. Sacrifice. Shannon. Sacrifice. Goda. Sacrificed. Ava died on the second twilight. Stake of Asmodeus. Hideyoshi. Forehead pierced by the stake of Beelzebub. Kenzo. Forehead gouged by a stake of Mammon. Cannon. Chest gouged by the stake of Satan. Genji. Stomach gouged by the stake of Lucifer. Uh, Nancho knee gouged by the stake of Belphegor, and Kumasawa ga gouged by the stake of Leviathan. Beatrice, she was finally able to open the door to the Golden Land. Natsui, the witch, praised her nobility and granted her the honor of a duel. George accepted the wish, prostrated himself, and was invited to the Golden Land. Jessica accepted the wish, prost which prostrated herself, and was invited to the Golden Land. Maria accepted the wish, prostrated herself, and was invited to the Golden Land. Battler, he denies the existence of the witch. Will she invite him to the Golden Land? The witch shall praise the wise and grant four treasures in the Golden Land, and those who choose to choose to revive the souls of the dead and they love, they pass. Possess. Because of what they desire could not be gained and from a mountain of gold, no matter how high. For Jessica has lost fiance, for uh, for George has lost fiance, for Jessica her lost love, for Maria, Maria the lost love of her mother. May rest in peace, Beatrice. May your slumber never be disturbed again. The winner of the Golden Witch Beatrice is the Golden Witch Beatrice of the 18th nun solved the riddle in the of the golden time. All 18 died. When the seagulls cried, none were left alive. <laughs> Fuck! What the whole shit was that stakes business about? All those weird ass names. Mammon, Belphegor, Lucifer, Satan. What the fuck's that about? <laughs> Umaneko, Noneko, Koroni, Rondo of the Witch and Reasoning. Episode 1, Chapter 1, Done. Whatever they want to call it. I'll say Chapter. Chapter 1, Done. Fuck, this thing's really fast-paced. I mean, my god.
A lot faster pace than uh, Higurashi, I will say that. At least with the mystery and murder stuff. Which is good and bad in, in its thing. The new elements added. The Golden Witch has prepared a gift in commemoration of your recent sojourn. The new elements may be accessed from the title screen. Can I have that fucking gold? Please? 